This is ICAC class 10 board physics paper that is science paper 1 and this was held yesterday that is 4th of March 2024. We already saw yesterday how to solve the MCQs that was question 1 of section A and now we have to look at question 2 and 3 and section B. Let us now look at section A question 2. Your first subpart has A saying in the following atoms which is a radioactive isotope and give one use of this isotope. So here out of all these carbon 14 remember it is the beta emitter. So this is the correct option. Now carbon 14 is used for carbon dating and then you write what is carbon dating. That is it helps us to determine the age of the fossils. Okay, so we come to V part. Name the class of lever that is shown in the picture below. Now for the lever, there are three quantities, right? We have the fulcrum, load and effort. Now which is the effort? The effort is here. Okay, so the effort is going to be applied here. And you can see this is going to take the pivoting place this is around which the action takes place. So this is your fulcrum and this is going to be the lid which is going to be open. That is your load. Okay. So fulcrum between load and effort. So you will say it is class 1 lever and that is because fulcrum is between load and effort. Let us come to the second part. Fill in the blanks. A. When a stone tied to the string is rotated in the horizontal plane, the tension in the string provides, it will be providing the centripetal force, which is necessary for the circular motion. So we know the two kinds of forces that are there in circular motion. B part, work done in this force at any instant is going to be zero. Now why it is going to be zero? because the angle between the centripetal force and the direction of displacement at any instant that is going to be 90 degrees. So we say W is equal to Fs cos theta which is Fs cos 90, cos 90 is 0 and so the work done is 0. Now we come to the third part. A non-uniform beam is weighing 120 Newton and it is pivoted at one end. So where is the pivot? they have written over here pivot so this is where you are going to see the pivot so that is going to be the point around which the action takes place calculate the value of f to keep the beam in equilibrium now this is the center of gravity the weight of the ruler is going to be having a turning effect which is clockwise so the force will have to be applied in this manner here so by the principle of moments we will have the sum of clockwise moments and anti-clockwise moments. They will be equal. Now this statement you can write on your own. I am just writing over here. This is W1 and this will be your L1 and this will be your W2 and from here to here this one is your L2. So we will write W1 L1 equal to W2 L2 and W1 is 120 Newton multiplied by L1 is 0 0.20 meter is equal to W2 is F and multiplied by 0 0.80. Okay, so you will have F equal to 120 Newton multiplied by 0 0.20. So I'm just writing 0.2 meter upon it will be 0.8 meter. And unit wise this will get cancelled. This will go here 4 times and 4 will go here 30 times. So your force will be therefore equal to 30 Newton. Okay, so we are able to understand how to write and present our work. Just to save on time, I am not writing all the statements. Let us come to the fourth subpart. Mira chose to use a block and tackle system of 9 pulleys instead of a single movable pulley to lift the heavy load. What is the advantage of using block and tackle system over the single movable pulley? 
so for a part you will say that the ma for single movable pulley is going to be is going to be equal to the velocity ratio in ideal situation so i'm taking the ideal ma is going to be 2 but your ma for the block and tackle system and it has n pulleys so remember your number of pulleys is equal to number of strands which is equal to the velocity ratio and that will be velocity ratio in ideal case so that will be 9 so what will be the advantage so you have to write i do not have the place but here you will write the effort is going to be half of the load and in this case, effort is going to be one ninth of the load. So the load can be overcome with applying one ninth of the effort. So lesser effort is applied by using a block and tackle system of nine. So you can write that on your own words. And let us come to the B part. Why should she connect more number of pulleys in the upper fixed block? Now, this part may be confusing for some of you, but the more number of pulleys gives as, or you can say since it gives vertically downward direction, which is the convenient direction, for the effort okay so that is the advantage remember rather than applying the effort in the upward manner it will be more easier to have the effort having vertically downward direction okay that is convenient now let me just give you an illustration of this supposing I have let us say we have a uh, this is the regular block and tackle system. I'm just taking the easiest one. All right. Now, we normally have the string going this way. Okay. So, this is tension, tension, tension this way. Uh, let me just make a little bit of correction here. Okay. So, this string should not touch this hook. Okay. So, here you will see load is equal to 3t and this is t this is effort and effort is equal to t all right so mechanical advantage here becomes load upon effort which means it is 3t upon t which is equal to 3 okay so number of pulleys equal to we are equal to number of strands okay so you understood that now let us say that for whatever reason someone has decided to draw this okay so this is the load and here you will have can you see can you see what has happened over here did you see what has happened here okay here this is effort is here and this is the T and this is T, T and T. So, if you take the number of pulleys more in the lower block, you will have effort vertically upward direction. Now, which is convenient? Is this convenient or this is convenient? So, the advantage of attaching more number of pulleys in the upper block is advantageous because the effort is in a convenient direction although you will see here you will have one two three four so the load is actually uh, distributed over four tensions so four strings are there so you will get mechanical advantage four but inconvenience is that effort is in vertically upward direction which is not convenient i hope you have understood this part let us look at the fifth sub part Sumit does 600 joules of work in 10 minutes and Amit does 300 joules of work in 20 minutes. 
calculate the ratio of the powers delivered by them. Now power is equal to work upon time. So we just write power of Sumit is to power of Amit is equal to work upon time of Sumit is to work upon time of Amit. And then we substitute the value 600 for Sumit, 300 for Amit, the work and the time. Can you see what I have done? Instead of writing 10 minutes, I have written 10 into, into 60 seconds. Why did I do this? Because joule per second will be what? So in case your examiner decides to cut your marks because you did not substitute in SI units, you are safeguarding that. Now this is plain simple and the answer is 4 is to 1. Okay, the sixth one. Five bulbs are connected in series in the room. One bulb is fused. It is removed and the remaining four bulbs are again connected in series. What will be the effect? On the following physical quantities, you have to write whether it is increasing, decreasing or it remains the same. Now, if they are connected in series, their total equivalent resistance will be the, if each one of them is having R ohm, it will be 5 R. Now, one bulb is fused, so the remaining four bulbs will have 4 R as the resistance. And so, the resistance will decrease. But intensity of light, if the resistance in the circuit is decreasing, the current is going to increase because it is inversely proportional to the resistance, right? So intensity of light will be increasing. Seventh subpart, Rohan conducted experiments on echo in different media. He observed that the minimum distance of X meters is required for the echo to be heard in oxygen and Y meters in benzene and compare X and Y. What is X and Y? X and Y is the minimum distance. Now when it is minimum distance, remember the time interval is 0.1 second. That is our audibility uh, capacity. That if the two sounds are not separated by 0.1 seconds, if it's less than that, we cannot hear it as an echo. So minimum time should be 0.1 seconds, right? Now, speed of sound is given here and speed of benzene is given here and they are telling you compare x is to y. And what is x is to y? It is the minimum distance. Do you remember the echo formula? The echo formula says v is equal to 2d upon t. And therefore, distance will be equal to v into t upon 2. So, this one will be your d1 which will be v into t upon 2 and this will be for oxygen is to v into t upon 2 and that will be for benzene. Now velocity wise for oxygen we need to write 340 into 0.1 upon 2 is 2 it will be 200 into 0 0.1 upon 2 now 2 and 2 gets cancelled from both sides 0 0.1 gets cancelled this one zero gets cancelled and you have 34 is to 20 which you can further reduce by 2 and that will be 17 is to 10 Okay, and this is our comparison between X and Y and that is our answer. So, you finish question 2, let us come to question 3. Let's come to question 3. The first part A, in a reading glass, that means magnifying glass where we use the convex lens. What is the position of the object with respect to the convex lens? Here you will say that object must be between principal focus and the optical center. Two 
two form two form upright and magnified image of the object at the distance of distinct vision okay so that way your examiner has no problem giving you your full mark why can we not use concave lens for the same purpose now if it is a concave lens you will say that since concave lens forms upright but diminished image which cannot help in reading the print easily okay so we got first part done now the second part a fuse is rated 5 ampere can it be used with a geyser rated 1540 watts and 220 volts write yes or no give supporting calculations to justify your answer now in order to say yes or no we will have to show working anyway so first we show the working power is equal to vi and so the safe current limit will be v comes this side so p upon v substitute the power and the volt values 14 upon 2 gives us two ones and two sevens so that is seven ampere and we say that five ampere is less than seven ampere and so five ampere fuse melts and breaks the circuit if the current exceeds five ampere and so we write here no they just ask you to write yes or no okay now this part has not come in the recording but you know what it is 5 ampere fuse melts and breaks the circuit if the current exceeds 5 ampere okay just remember what i said here third sub part state two factors affecting the speed of rotation in the coil in a dc motor now this is a straightforward learning type of question i'm not going to show you how to write but just say that the two factors you will write the two factors are and in your first point you will write the number of turns in the coil and say that the speed of rotation increases with increasing number of turns and the second one you can say the area of cross section of the coil okay that means on increasing the area of, of cross section of the coil the speed of rotation will increase or you can say the current okay so the amount of current more means the speed of rotation will be more you can say any two of these the fourth sub part how much heat is required to convert 500 grams of ice at 0 degree c to water at 0 degree c the latent heat of fusion of ice is 3 130 joule per gram now here the heat required is for the change of state so the formula is mass into latent heat of fusion so we have 500 gram as the mass and this is 330 joule per gram so gram and gram gets cancelled and you will have these three zeros and 5 3 is 15 carry 1, 5, 3 is 15 and 1, 16. So we have 1, 6, 5, 0, 0, 0 joules of heat energy and that is our answer. Now let us come to our last question of question 3. A copy and complete the nuclear reaction by filling in the blanks and you have been given uranium 235-92 plus 1 neutron gives you barium and this is missing so we'll call this as a 
and krypton this is missing so i'll call this as b plus 3 neutrons now here the working chemistry it is for two marks so a and b value should be accurate so if you consider the mass number it will be conserved so 235 that is the top number plus one neutron so that is plus one is equal to here a plus this is 92 and plus there are three neutrons so plus three so we have a equal to this is 236 minus this is 95 okay so that gives us 141 so your a is 141 so you will write here 141 and let us come to b b is the subscript which is connected with atomic number so atomic number is conserved so we will have 92 plus here there is 0 and that is equal to here it is 56 plus this is b plus there is 0 and so b will be equal to 92 minus 56 and that turns out to be 36 so we will write for this not b but we will write this 36 and we will rewrite this whole thing okay the entire equation so that finishes section a completely now section b will be another video because i do not want this video to be a very long one okay so let us look at this section b for which we have to choose any four questions out of the ones which are given and that will be the next video all right so we'll stop here i hope you have understood where you have got your marks where you have lost marks hope you haven't lost many marks and i hope that you really do really well in this paper thank you for watching bye